Good day everyone. Welcome to the CodeZultant channel. This video will discuss how to calculate feeder and service using an optional method. In our previous video, we determined the service and feeder load using the standard method. To easily understand we will be using the same project and we can compare the result. Let's get started. Our sample project has a plot area of 120 square meter. Based on the calculations from the previous videos, the load breakdown is as follows. General lighting, 1752 volt amperes, which includes receptacle outlets in general areas, bathroom circuits, garage circuits, and lighting loads. Small appliance branch circuits, two circuits at 1500 volt amperes each. Laundry circuits, 1500 volt amperes. Electric clothes dryer, 5000 volt amperes. Electrical cooking range, 6000 volt amperes. Split type air conditioning unit, 1.5 horsepower. Room air conditioning units, 3 units at 1.0 horsepower each. Storage water heater, 4.5 kilowatts. Booster pump, 1.5 horsepower. For this project, there is a 20% future expansion to consider. What are the rules for the optional feeder method? Section 2.20.4.3 Optional feeder and service calculation for dwelling units states that the total connected load served by a single 230 volt set of two wire service, or 115 230ths volt, or 208 y 120 volt set of three wire service or feeder conductors with an ampacity of 100 or greater. It shall be permissible to calculate the feeder and service loads in accordance with this section instead of section 2.20.3. Feeder and service load calculations. The calculated load shall be the result of adding the loads from 2.20.4.3b and c. Feeder and service entrance conductors whose calculated load is determined by this optional calculation shall be permitted to have the neutral load determined by 2.20.3.22. Therefore, the optional method is only applicable to dwelling units served single by a 230 volt set of two wire service, or 115 230th volt or 208 y. 120 volt set of three wire service or feeder conductors with an ampacity of 100 or greater. The optional method consists of three calculation steps. First step is determine the general load. The general load must be at least 100% for the first 10 kVA, plus 40% of the remainder of the following loads. 1. General lighting and receptacles, 24 volt ampere per square meter. 2. Small appliance and laundry branch circuits, 1,500 volt ampere for each 20 ampere small appliance and laundry branch circuit. 3. The nameplate volt ampere rating of all appliances and motors that are fastened in place. Except, heating or air conditioning unit. Second step. Heating and air conditioning load include the larger of 1 through 6. Air conditioning equipment, 100%. Heat pump compressor without supplemental heating, 100%. Heat pump compressor and supplemental heating, 100% of the nameplate rating of the heat pump compressor and 65% of the supplemental electric heating for central electric space heating systems. If the control circuit is designed so that the heat pump compressor can't run at the same time as the supplementary heat, omit the compressor from the calculation. Space heating units, 3 or fewer separately controlled units, 65%. Space heating units, 4 or more separately controlled units, 40%. Thermal storage heating, 100%. Let's apply this to our sample project. For general loads, we have general lighting at 1752 volt amperes, 220A small appliance branch circuits at 1500 volt amperes each, one laundry circuit at 1500 volt amperes, all appliances that fasten in place, except heating and air conditioning unit. The electric dryer should be a minimum of 5000 volt amperes, a 6000 volt ampere electric cooking range, a 1.5 horsepower booster pump at 2300 volt ampere and a 4500 volt ampere storage water heater getting the total will give us 24052 volt amperes as specified in section 2.20.4b the first 10000 volt amperes at 100% demand load and the remaining shall be at 40% demand factor hence 14052 multiplied by 40% will give us 5620.8 volt amperes for the heating and air conditioning load, we have a 1.5 horsepower air conditioning unit with a full load current of 10 amperes, resulting in a total of 2,300 volt amperes. Additionally, we have three units of 1 horsepower air conditioning units, each with a current of 8 amperes, totaling 5,520 volt amperes. 
Therefore, the sum of these values, along with the demanded general load of 10,000 volt amperes and 5,620.8 volt amperes, gives us a total demand load of 23,440.8 volt amperes. Let's determine the feeder and service minimum ampacity of the conductors. In this case, the total demand load is 23,440.80 volt amperes, and the highest rated motor is a 1.5 horsepower booster pump. Using this information, we can calculate the minimum ampacity of the conductors. The calculation is as follows. Minimum ampacity equals 23,440.80 volt amperes plus 25% of 2,300 volt amperes, divided by 230 volts. This results in a minimum ampacity of 104.42 amperes, using ampacity table 3.10.2.6b16 at 75 degrees Celsius. A 38 square millimeter conductor is suitable for this ampacity. However, since a 20% future expansion is to be considered, we multiply 104.42 by 1.20, which gives us 125.3 amperes. According to the table, a 50 square millimeter conductor is suitable for this higher ampacity. For feeder protection and service equipment, maximum ampacity equals 23,440.80 volt amperes plus 150% of 2,300 volt amperes, divided by 230 volts. This results in maximum ampacity of 116.92 amperes, using a standard amperes rating, using 125 ampere trip, circuit breaker. Considering 20% future expansion, we multiply 116.92 by 1.20, which gives us 140.30 amperes. Hence use 150 ampere trip, circuit breaker. The table provided presents a comparison between two methods used to calculate the load of the feeder and service for the same project. Based on the data, we can conclude that the optional method yields a lower total demand load compared to the standard method. Moreover, it is noteworthy that the optional method boasts the added benefits of being faster and simpler to calculate. However, it is important to remember that the optional method can solely be applied to dwelling units with an ampacity of 100 amperes or more.